Hello, I'm Jonathan Burnham, aka Kalos, and today I'm going to do a track guide of Kyle Ami. Not only that, I'm going to be using the Ford GTLM. I'm going to reveal my bass tune, and I'm going to reveal my uh, tune, how I adjusted it for Kyle Ami. Uh, there really wasn't too big a difference between the two. Uh, I have run a 42.9, uh, 142.9 here in qualification and multiplayer. I'll show that here somewhere on the screen. Uh, but this lap, I couldn't reproduce it in testing, is a 143.2. So that's the lap you're going to get. You can see when I go through it, it's not perfect. And I do my best to uh, help you out. I'm not, the, I'm not world class. So if you definitely see something I can improve on, let me know. And without further ado, we're going to get into the track guide for, first. And then I'm going to show you my tunes. Cheers. All right, I wasn't able to replicate the 142.9 I did in qualifying, but I did do a 143.2 here. So I'll give you a quick overview of this lap and a guide to where the braking markers and how I took the corners. Well, freeze frame here. Uh, what I'm looking for is the 100 board right there, it's slightly to the right, and that pavement that's just past it. My actual breaking spot is when I get to that pavement. Now, remember, this is qualifying tune. This is in softs, uh, but that is a spot I want to break. Uh, avoid the temptation to start turning towards the corner. You want to start your breaking in a straight line and get slowed down. We're going to take a tight line through this corner because we want to avoid uh, going wide for the next section. Uh, so we're going to actually lose a little time on the first corner in order to gain a lot of time through this uh, second section. I dropped the second gear. You can drop the first, but I find that I get a better run out of the corner uh, getting on the throttle out of second. So you just got to really give it a nice tight turn. Uh, it's easier to turn in first, but if you do a hard enough turn, it will go in in second. As you can see, I did not run the car all the way out to the rumble strips. Uh, and I turned the car back left as far as I could, trying to line up uh, this right-hander. I'm going to abuse this curb, but you need to be careful. You can run over it, but if you got a little too much turn angle, it can really upset the car. On turn three, I have not really found a good braking marker. I do a lot of it by feel. I've tried going in uh, late and then doing a hard turn back, but I found just kind of straightening up the car as much as I can, braking, starting braking in a straight line, use the brakes to rotate the car and maintain speed on the way through. I'm going to hit that left curb. The car can pretty much handle it, but I do have to be careful. So if I go full throttle on the curb, it'll throw in the, throw the rear end out. On the exit, those curbs to the right, you can clip them. But if you get on them too much, they'll pull your car right off into the grass. At the start of turn four, we're looking for the red and white rumble strips. Shift down the fourth at that point once you hit it and uh, throw the car to the right. Uh, just a tap of the brakes. And then we're going to be lightly on the throttle to stabilize the car. Uh, but don't go full throttle yet because what we're going to do is the rumble strips to the right and the very corner of the curb is we're going to get up on those. And then we're going to touch them with the tires and allow those to help us rotate. And then there's a certain point as you go through the corner, you're going to be able to get fully on the throttle and power your way out. Again, those... Uh, Curbs on the left-hand side as you're exiting the corner. Uh, try not to do more than clip those. If you hit those and get enough of your tire on it, it will pull you right off the track. So be very careful there. We want a good run to the next corner. You can see we've already passed the 50 marker. And we're looking for the end of this uh, tire barrier that has the orange strip. Uh, we're breaking, starting our breaking right before we kind of get to that. 
You can also use the red and white rumble strips right in front of you. Uh, and it's really quick between the 50 and those. So you're about halfway in between uh, getting those passed and you're starting to break hard. I left it in fourth gear, even though I was starting to uh, over uh, rev it just because I didn't want to do a shift up real quick to fifth and boom, 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 all the way back to second. And I find it helps rotate into this left-hand corner. Again, this left-hand corner, it's got the, the big kind of uh, thick corner you can kind of go over. You can use it to help rotate the car. Just be really careful because any amount of too much throttle will cause the car to over rotate and pull the rear end out. As you're going out to the exit, you're going to be careful with those curbs because just like the other, it's the same type of curb. Get too much tire on it and it'll pull you right off into the grass. This is the start of turn six. It's a really important corner to get right. The red and white rumble strips right in front of us is our braking spot. And it's just a light tap of the brakes to get the car to rotate towards the left. Uh, you can't really see the spot you need to hit, but it becomes obvious real quickly. We are about to abuse this curb something fierce. Uh, we're going to be up all over. It's going to help us rotate the car. Don't get too far to the left. Because you get over that hump, it will kind of pull the car off. But you want to be all over this. I have the car raised up just enough that I can do this. I found if I lowered it at all from where I'm at, it, it just won't take that curb. I had to raise it up uh, a notch, and then I was able to do this. But yeah, we'll be up all over this curb. It's a quick right back to turn seven. And again, you got another one of these curbs. You will not want to be all over this one. You're just going to clip it with your right tire. You can see I've already lifted a little bit, anticipating that if I hit it with full throttle, it's going to upset my car. But if I do this right, it'll help rotate the car. And as soon as my tire comes off it, I can almost go on full throttle. Again, be careful of these curbs to the left. Get on them too much and they drag you right off the track. Uh, clip them at most. Turn eight is one of the most difficult corners that I, I, I do. I, I, hard, I don't think I do this the best, and it's hard to be consistent because there's no clear marker. You got the crest of the hill. You pass the 100 board, and you don't see the corner until you're up on top of it. Break too early, you come up way too short. Uh, break too hard, you'll lock up the fronts and keep going off the track. Break too late, you'll go way too wide. So... Yeah, it's real difficult. Let's forward it just a second here, and I'll show you where the braking marker is. And there it is. Really hard to spot. Uh, you crest the hill, and boom, you're on top of it. You brake too early, anticipating it, and you'll end up way too short of the corner. And then if you wait too long coming over the crest, you'll be too long. Uh, be careful because the car gets light here. You hit the brakes too hard. Uh, I'm not sure with ABS. I don't use it. But you hit the brakes too hard, the fronts lock up, and then you just keep going straight, and you don't need get turned into the corner. You can see I don't quite hit the apex here, uh, but I do drop in the first. Uh, I want to get the car rotated as quickly as possible, and I'm getting on the throttle. Got to be really careful, though, if you've got a car where you're in first gear like this, you can kind of pull the rear end out hitting the gas too hard. So you're bringing up the throttle, and you can see as I get the full, I shift up the second almost immediately. Turn nine is flat out. I just make sure you got rotated through turn eight enough that you can do that and not run wide. You're going to run all the way to the curbing on the right, and then just be careful not to touch the grass. Also, turn 10 is flat out as well. We're looking for this overhang. As soon as we are about to come under it, we're going to turn to the left. We don't lift the throttle, and we're going to aim as far left as we can, and we're going to stay as far to the left as we can to set up the next corner. Uh, try not to drift out too far. Just like turn eight, this is a super tricky corner. We're looking for that 100 board over there on the left. Uh, we're trying to get as far to the left as possible. 
but you need to be really careful here. You get too far to the left and start breaking straight, you can break right off the track. So you want to leave yourself a little bit of space because you're not going to get all the way perfectly lined up. As soon as that 100 board passes uh, that pillar to my left and I start seeing it come out, uh, I'm going to be hitting the brakes really hard. Make sure it's in a straight line. Avoid the temptation to be turning in towards this corner. Uh, otherwise, you're actually just going to extend your braking zone and you're going to go way wide of it. Uh, brake hard as you're shifting down through the gears and as you're getting down the second, get off, start coming off the brake and rotating the car. Uh, you can abuse that curb on the right hand side a little bit. And then as you're exiting, again, we have those uh, curbs that will pull you off the track. However, if you're really careful here, and you can see I do this, as I'm exiting the corner, I actually straddle that curb. Uh, you got to be really careful because you can get a uh, off track for it, but you can get it straight line through it, and it works pretty well. Here we're looking for the red and white curbing. Uh, I initially tried taking this corner just with a lift, but I do find it's quicker just with the lightest tap of the brakes. So we're not actually going to brake at the red and white. If you look closely at where it kind of curves a little bit to the left, that's the actual point. You have a light tap of the brakes. There's the curbs on the inside. You're going to abuse those with your right tires, but you have to make sure you're not, that you have like half throttle or so, just so that it doesn't uh, throw the car out. And then on the exit, this another reason you use the brake is on the exit. Again, you have those curbs that'll pull you off the track. This helps you avoid those curbs as well and get a straight line shot to the final corner of the track. The final corner of the track. We're looking for the 50 board here on the right. Uh, if the 50 board in race is knocked down, there is a small thin line across the track that you will see as you come up on it. That's your braking point. Uh, we're going to power down through the gears, braking the straight line as fast as we can, and then almost immediately hit, them, hit the brakes hard and start coming off them and rotating the car towards the left-hand curbing. Again, this is that curbing you can kind of get up onto. Uh, use your right tire, your left tires to kind of rotate the car a little bit. But don't overdo it because you want to be on the gas very fast. You can see I actually missed the apex here. And I'm already on the throttle. I'm almost at full throttle in first gear. Using that gear to rotate the rear round so that I can get lined up for the straight. I'm aimed at the Rakuzu boards uh, right now. So you can kind of use that as a bit of a reference as you're getting on the gas. You can abuse these curbs on the exit, but be very careful. Otherwise, if you go wide, you will get a uh, track limit penalty. Last lap. Let's go. And that concludes uh, your, your track guide for Kyle Ami for GTLM. I hope that this helps those out there, and if anyone's using my car, that you can see what I did and maybe replicate it a bit. However, I'm not perfect, so if you find anything that you can teach me, uh, let me know about it in the comments, because I'm more than willing to listen. This is the tune I used for Kyle Ami. Uh, I will go through it. I'll give you a few seconds on each one. You can freeze frame it if you want to copy it. It is available for download. Uh, also, I will show you uh, what changes are made for my Road America tune and where I can run a 2041. So you can see 20, the, there, there's quite a few differences. Uh, uh, tire pressure is 29. It's going to be the same for both. Uh, gearing is quite different for both. Uh, much tighter on Kailami than I am on Road America. Leave that for about five seconds. Uh, this is my alignment. There's no changes between Kailami or Road America. Uh, Anti-roll bars. Uh, 32 in the front, 33 in the rear for Kailami. Uh, very close to what I use for Road America. I use uh, 32 in the front and 36 in the rear.
This is the springs. There's no change on the springs for Road America or Kailami, but the ride height is different. On uh, Road America, I go down to 2.5 and 2.6. I use 2.6 uh, in the front and 2.7 in the rear for uh, Kailami so I can go over those curbs. Uh, this is what I use for my dampers. Uh, no change between the two. Uh, suspension geometry it's the same bit between both uh, i'm not even really sure i made much changes or any at all in these uh, arrow 344 on the front 345 on the rear the only difference between this and road america is i run 330 on the front and uh th 331 on the rear at road america so i just add a little more downforce but I needed to keep the same arrow balance. I found if I added too much in the rear, I'd get a little too much understeer and not enough, uh, not enough rotation at high speed corners. Uh, brake balance. I always leave the pressure at 100. Uh, for the balance itself, I run 50 at Kailami. I run 49 at Road America. Uh, the differential. I came down a little on the differential from 72 at Road America to 70 for Kailami uh, just to give myself a little more comfort on the gas. Uh, for deceleration, I dropped that from 20 at Road America down to 19 for Kailami. Uh, just gives me a little more rotation as I'm pounding down through the gears. And there, my force feedback is 113 steering lock is 80 if you're on controller you probably want the steering lock at 100 uh, if you're on a wheel uh, i like 80 for this uh, these tunes and that about covers it i hope you enjoyed this and uh i hope you have fun out there with these tunes and uh now that you see them you can just copy what i have and make adjustments that suit your driving style